The 15th and 16th centuries marked a time when humanity began to redraw the edges of the known world. Ships carved new routes across oceans, ushering in the age of exploration as empires like Portugal and Spain expanded their reach to the Americas, Africa, and Asia. Gunpowder, printing presses, and compasses transformed warfare, knowledge, and navigation, while the Renaissance redefined man not as part of nature, but as master over it. The human spirit turned outward and upward, obsessed with dominion, driven by divine mission, wealth, and wonder. Yet in this age of human awakening, the natural world fell further into shadow. Across newly discovered lands, entire ecosystems were dismantled to serve expanding economies. Insular wildlife, unaccustomed to human presence, suffered first. Giant tortoises, flightless birds, and island endemic mammals vanished silently under axes and hooves. Spirituality evolved, but often placed mankind at the center of creation, reducing other beings to resources or curiosities. In pursuit of paradise, humanity sowed extinction in paradise's gardens. The Pico rail was a flightless rail species endemic to Pico Island in the Azores, known only from subfossil remains. It likely had a small, slender body and reduced wings, consistent with other island rails that evolved flightlessness due to the absence of natural predators. The species is thought to have gone extinct in the 1,400 years, shortly after human arrival, due to habitat destruction and the introduction of invasive mammals. The Tenerife giant lizard was an extinct reptile species once endemic to the islands of Tenerife and La Palma in the Canary Islands. It was the largest known reptile in the archipelago, reaching lengths of up to 125 centimeters, and inhabited the island's coastal lowlands. Fossil discoveries, including a remarkably preserved 700-thousand-year-old specimen, suggest it lived well before human arrival. However, Bone remains show clear signs of butchery by the indigenous Guanches, and written records indicate the species survived into the 15th century. Its extinction likely followed soon after the Castilian conquest, driven by human hunting and ecological disruption. The Kauai finch was a small Hawaiian bird with a blunt bill, likely adapted for cracking nuts, blossoms and possibly feeding on insects. Though it may have inhabited highland forests, fossils found at lower elevations suggest it ventured into more vulnerable habitats. Its extinction likely began with the arrival of Polynesians, who altered the landscape and introduced non-native species and diseases. The South Island giant moa was the tallest bird known, with females reaching heights of up to 3.6 meters when stretching their necks. Despite their size, they were relatively light for their height, weighing around 200 kilograms these moas were wingless, with only vestigial shoulder bones, and had strong legs and necks suited for their herbivorous lifestyle. Their feathers were brown and they likely lived in lowland forests, grasslands, and shrublands across New Zealand's South Island. Adapted to a fibrous plant diet, they use strong bills and neck muscles to tear twigs, leaves, berries and shrubs, aided by gizzard stones for digestion. With no native land mammals, giant moas filled the role of large terrestrial herbivores, much like giraffes in Africa. Their vision was limited, but they had a keen sense of smell, helping them navigate their dense forest habitats. Moas likely lived long lives, with females competing for mates and smaller males possibly incubating their fragile eggs. Nesting occurred in rock shelters, and chicks may have had striped plumage. These remarkable birds went extinct in the 15th century, driven to extinction by overhunting and habitat disruption following human settlement by the Maori. The South American wolf was a medium to large extinct canid native to the Pampas and Patagonia of South America, 
closely related to the Falkland Islands wolf. It likely survived until around 600 years ago, far more recently than previously believed. Its diet was more carnivorous than modern foxes, and isotopic analysis suggests it preyed on small mammals and scavenged large carcasses. Archaeological evidence indicates that it had interactions with humans, including burial in human graves, possibly reflecting its symbolic or social importance. Despite its wide distribution and adaptability, its extinction remains puzzling, as there is little evidence pointing to climate change or competition with dogs as the main cause. Dwarf thick knee was a small, flightless species of thick knee bird once endemic to the Bahamas. It likely inhabited dry, open habitats and fed on insects and small invertebrates, using its large eyes for nocturnal foraging. Subfossil remains suggest it was significantly smaller than its relatives, with reduced wings and adaptations for a terrestrial lifestyle. Its extinction around 1460 was most likely driven by the arrival of indigenous peoples and the introduction of non-native mammals such as rats, which preyed on its eggs and disturbed its fragile island ecosystem. Broad-billed moa was one of the most widespread species of moa, inhabiting a range of lowland environments such as forests, shrublands, grasslands, and dunes across New Zealand's main islands and Stewart Island. It was well adapted to open habitats and likely played a significant role in its ecosystems as a large herbivore. This species is notably represented in museum collections, as about half of all complete moa eggs belong to it, with distinct differences in egg size among regional groups. The Maori referred to it as moa haka haka, and it was likely hunted extensively following their arrival in the 14th century. As with other moa, this overhunting is believed to have driven its extinction. Finch's duck was a large flightless duck endemic to New Zealand, likely weighing up to 2 kilograms and possessing strong legs but reduced wings. Unlike many other ducks, it was not closely tied to aquatic habitats and lived in forests, shrublands, and temperate grasslands. It probably nested in tree hollows or logs and fed on vegetation, fallen fruit, and small invertebrates. The species went extinct due to overhunting by humans and predation by introduced mammals, with some evidence suggesting it may have survived into the late 19th century. Olson's petrel was a small seabird of the petrel family that once nested exclusively on the remote island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic. Closely related to the living bulwars petrel, it likely shared similar traits, such as slender wings adapted for gliding over ocean waters and a nocturnal, burrow-nesting lifestyle. Subfossil remains suggest it was adapted to a terrestrial breeding phase, but it disappeared shortly after the island's discovery in 1502. Vespucci's giant rat was a moderately large rodent of the Orozomian group, known only from the remote volcanic archipelago of Fernando de Narona off Brazil. It evolved unique terrestrial adaptations, likely after colonizing the island via driftwood, and exhibited distinct cranial and dental traits not seen in its mainland relatives. Fossil remains show it was abundant in the late Holocene, but it vanished soon after the island's discovery, likely due to invasive species like rats and mice, habitat disturbance, and possibly predation by cats or humans. Galapagos giant rat is an extinct species of sigmodontine rodent, known only from Santa Cruz Island in the Galapagos Islands. It likely met its demise when European settlers introduced invasive species to the island. It is the only species in the genus Megarizomys. Its relationships have historically been unclear, it has been placed in both Orozomyni and Thomasomyni in the past. A 2020 study favored placing it in the former on overall skull morphology. The Puerto Rican Huesha was an extinct rodent native to Hispaniola and Ganave Island, later introduced to the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. It served as an important food source for the Taino people and was also consumed by early European explorers. 
The species began to decline after European colonization, likely due to habitat changes and competition with invasive species like black rats introduced around 1500. Despite being widely considered extinct, there remains some hope that small populations persist in isolated, undisturbed habitats. The Cayman Island Hyusha is an extinct rodent known only from fossil remains, which have not yet been assigned a formal species name. It was a member of the Capramiidae family, closely related to other Caribbean Hyushas, and likely shared their robust body and herbivorous diet. Its biology probably included a terrestrial lifestyle adapted to island environments, similar to its relatives. The Samama Hyusha was an extinct rodent species endemic to the moist lowland forests of Hispaniola. Fossil remains found alongside introduced rats suggest it survived until European colonization, likely succumbing to predation by these invasive species. Some researchers believe it may correspond to the Quimi described by early Spanish colonists in the 16th century, or the Comadreja, a creature rumored to have persisted into the 20th century. The Hispaniolan edible rat was a recently extinct rodent also endemic to the moist lowland forests of Hispaniola and the sole species in its genus. Known from archaeological remains and historical accounts, it was described as smaller and paler than Hyusha's, with distinctive stiff, erect hair typical of spiny rats in the Echomyidae family. Despite being highly valued as food by indigenous peoples, its extinction was likely driven primarily by competition and predation from introduced Old World rats rather than direct human hunting. The Ascension Night Heron was an extinct flightless night heron endemic to Ascension Island in the South Atlantic, known mainly from six bone fragments discovered in guano deposits and caves. A possible early account of this bird appears in a 1555 travel report by André Thevet, who described a flightless heron-like bird called Apinar with black and white plumage and a cormorant-like bill, though his reliability is questioned due to his tendency to invent details. Despite some confusion with the great auk, biogeographical evidence and physical descriptions strongly suggest that Thevet's Apinar may indeed have been the Ascension Night Heron. <laughs>